Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Rajveer and in this video I'm going to show you what I was playing around in the last days. <laughs> so I was playing around with Teachable Machine, which is a free open source platform from Google that you can use to train your machine learning models. So I'm using an image recognition uh, example where I show you some different images and then my machine learning model is telling you what is this image. And without writing a single piece of code, I could do that. So I'm going to show you how. So right now you can see on my screen, I have a, a live streaming coming from a camera. So this, you can see that it's a monkey on the top. And on the bottom, you can see my face. Okay, let's, let's, let's focus on here first before I <laughs> overload you with the information. So let's maximize that. Now you can see that this is my live feed coming. And here you can see I have my output, which is showing Rajvi. That's my name and it's 100% score, right? Because I have trained my face in this model. Now, if I bring another guy here, let's say I bring this uh, monkey here, and you can see that now it shows Vago monkey 100%, okay? Because this image has been trained by my model. And if I bring another image, which is already trained, you can see that this is the present I got recently from SPS. This is my uh, control X automation emoji, all right? Or box, box text dot emoji, right? So you can see that score is also 100% because this is also being trained. So these two um, <laughs> softwares are trained and also my photo and the background, okay? So now these uh, images I am collecting in the software Teachable Platform and I train this image. This is a self trained model. You don't have to do anything. They have the algorithm in the back end, which is going to train your algorithm, train your model. And then you can just export this model and take this link, okay? This is the link that you get once you trained your model. And what I did, I took this link and put it in the Teachable Machine node, which is running in Flowfuse. So you can install this node. You can just go to your Flowfuse account or Node-RED account and go here, manage palette, and just type here Teachable Machine. And you will find these nodes, okay? Just install these nodes but be careful when you're installing these nodes in different platform, there are different configuration settings for that. So I recommend you to go to the, through this link, which will tell you about how you can install that on Mac, on Linux, or Windows, or if you want to install that on Raspberry Pi, there are some instructions how you can successfully install that, all right? So don't forget to check this link. I will add it in the video description. So once your model is ready, I just take this link and I put it here. Okay, and then I just feed this node with the images coming on my Raspberry Pi. So this is my Raspberry Pi, and this is like the live feed coming from my Raspberry Pi. So my Raspberry Pi is connected to a camera, which is giving me a live feed. And from this live feed, I'm extracting a photo. So if you see here, I have a HTTP request, and here I have my Raspberry Pi IP address, the port address, and with the action, I'm taking a snapshot, okay, from this stream. And if you see my template node here, I have the action stream. So this is the stream, uh, not here. This is the stream coming here from my template node. And I press inject, and this is going to give me a photo, which goes to my machine learning model, which will tell me what photo is this. And then I filter out the message and I get the result here. So it says it's a Bosch Rexroth emoji, okay? Because this image has been trained here. Similarly, now if I go and put another image, so I'm gonna put, instead of emoji, I put this monkey, and then I click on inject, I will get output Vago monkey, all right? That's how it is being recognized in the image and give me the output. So if you see the workflow, I first train my model and then I get this URI, which has feed in the flow fuse, which is over here, okay? And then I have my Raspberry Pi, which is having a flow fuse running inside. And this is getting a live stream from my camera. Okay, so I have to set up the Raspberry Pi and then Raspberry Pi sent this image to this uh, Teachable Machine node. And then I just finally get the result. All right, so to make it more interesting, let's say I want to add more images. I want to train another image here, okay? And I can show you how easy it is to do that. It takes some time for model to update on the cloud, but it takes a fraction of seconds to train the model. So let's see if we have another <laughs> software here, which is a panda, okay? Now, if you see here, when I bring the panda here, 
the training model is confused if it's a monkey or an emoji because this image is not being trained. So what we can do that, we can create a class or add a class here. And I put this name, this is from Vago, it's a panda, okay? And I click on the webcam, you can see now webcam is here. I bring it here. And now I have to just press on this button, hold to record. So it will take multiple images. Now you can see that it's taking images. So I just hold it in different positions. All right, so I have 125 samples, pretty good. So once the sample is done, you can see you have a button now enabled, which says train model. So there are some parameters here, but I will keep it as default. Just click on train model. So now the model is again going through all the images over and over again and trying to figure out the difference between these images to give you the right result. All right, so let's see. Uh, we should be having the result in a few seconds. So this is being trained and there you go. It's already trained now. Now you can see that there's another figure here, Vago Panda. And now you see it's a little bit of flickering because the panda was trained with me in the background. So you have to be very careful when you're training your images. This is just an explanation, but make sure when you're training the images, it has always the same background. But anyways, we will see if this gives us a good result. Now you can bring Panda here. You can see that it's 100%. Even from here, it's 100%. From here, it's 100%. Here is a little bit less because it's confused between me and Panda. And here it's okay. So looks pretty good. Now our Panda is trained. So let's train, um, if you like, we can also train another uh, emoji, but it's okay. So we have our image being trained. Now what we can do is I can click on export model. So now you can export this trained model in different ways. You have TensorFlow JS mode, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite. TensorFlow Lite is being used for if you want to put this model into your Edge device. So you can download this model and deploy it to your Edge device or Edge computer using TensorFlow Lite. But I will keep it as default. I will go to tensorflow.js and I have a shareable link which I want to share. Suppose I have to update my model because I made some changes. Now my model seems to be updated. Now the same link, this is the same link which is already being used in my Raspberry Pi. So I think I don't have to change anything here. This is the same link, all right? So now your model is updated. Now we just need to test if it's working good in our Pi. And just to let you know, with my last test results, it takes some time for model to be updated in the cloud, but we will see if it works. So now we have uh, a monkey here. Let's see if this works. I will delete everything. So we have a result, Valpo monkey, which is fine. I take it out and I trigger it again. In this case, it says none because there's no image there. And I bring now the emoji. I get box text from emoji. And now I will bring this panda. And we will see if it works. No, it doesn't work. It still shows Wago Monkey. So like I told you, it takes some time for the model to be updated. So we can troubleshoot that. So in this case, if you open this node, you can say output all predictions and just check if your class has been added here. So you can open this message, open the classes. You can see that the class is not yet updated in the cloud because here it only shows none monkey emoji and Rajpir. It doesn't show the panda which we created and added here. So this is the way to troubleshoot your model. So we can wait a bit and see if it works after a while. All right, now it seems to be updated. It hardly took four to five minutes for model to reflect in my <laughs> Raspberry Pi by online link. So in this case, now you can see that if I inject a timestamp, you can see the output is Vago Panda. So we can see that here now. That's my Vago Panda. It has 75% rate. And I told you it is because of my background. I was taking the data set with me in the background, all right? But still, you can see that the results are pretty good, right? So now let's try one more time. I take this away. I take another image. Now it's none. Here I get the Vago monkey. Okay, that's not 100% good. It's still, you can see that 49%. It's, I think it's Vago monkey, but let's try one more time. Also Vago monkey. Let's bring it like this. Now we can see that 82% Vago Panda. So maybe the face is very important when I was training. So you can see that. You can see the result, how you train your images based on how the algorithm gives you result back. Okay, so it's very important 
the, the training of the images should be in a best suitable environment. The background should be same for all the images and the image when you're going to show to the camera, this frame should also be present in your trained image, okay? So this was the example how you can add images in machine learning models and quickly update your model and use it wherever you want. Now you can imagine that this Raspberry Pi camera, I can connect to a conveyor belt and I can uh, determine my objects. If it's, uh, I don't know, object A, object B, or object C, and based on that, I can also do the sorting. And that's the project I wanna try now. After this video, I want to build a simulated factory where I have different objects coming on the conveyor. I will build a data set, feed it to this machine learning model and get the result and feed the result to the robot to pick correct object and put it in the correct basket. So this is my future project. Once it's done, I will be happy to share it with you. All right, so thank you for watching. And if you have any doubt, feel free to write me. If you want to try this and having some bugs coming up, just text me a message and I will try to help you out. All right, so thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.